Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel, this is Alex, it's been a long time, I hope you're all doing okay. So today I'm making this video because I'm going to be selling all of these plants. Um, as you probably will have noticed I've not been uploading for quite a while now um, and I just feel like it's time for me to do something else or allow someone else to have these plants. Um, Unfortunately, in my new apartment, I just don't really have any window space where I can put these guys, and um, so they're having to live in this tent in the corner of my kitchen, which just isn't really ideal. Um, I, my favourite thing about growing succulents is sort of seeing them in the sunshine and seeing the light shining through the leaves and all that sort of stuff, so uh, it's kind of just saps some of the enjoyment I was getting from it. Um, also, of course, the fact that I'm running it under artificial lighting, um, you know, it means that I'm practically paying, as things stand, £5 a month uh, just to run the light. And then, obviously, that will be going up quite considerably uh, when my fixed tariff comes to an end. I mean, it might even be something like £15 a month or maybe slightly more, which for me is just unsustainable as it is. So... It's time to say goodbye to these and let some of you people have them. So, um, I think all of these guys are up for sale. Uh, probably not these guys because I chopped the roots off these and I'm waiting for them to reroot again. Um, and I probably won't sell that one either. Um, so I've still got my quite a large Hawthia collection on on my east facing window in my living room. Which I might show you at the end of the video if I uh, if I remember, but yeah, all of these guys. So I have had a bit of trouble with them lately. Um, maybe six months ago, I noticed rips on some of my house plants, and then I also started to notice that um, one or two of the succulents were starting to develop signs of it. For example, you can see that like the tops of this started to just stop growing properly. So I purchased uh, two different types of predatory mites um, from a website online. And as far as I'm concerned, the thrips is gone. But I have to add that in there because I would absolutely hate for someone to buy these plants and then, you know, put them in with the rest of the collection and then start to realise they had thrips because it's a horrible pest and it's quite difficult to get rid of. Um, although the predatory mites work fantastically well but they're not the cheapest solution in the world and I wasn't willing to use pesticides because uh, I have a cat and if she ever decided to munch on one of the plants she would become quite sick so yeah I know that perhaps that will really sort of limit the number of people who would be interested perhaps people who had somewhere they could isolate the plants first uh, perhaps buy like a preventative predatory mite that uh, would just sort of clear everything up uh, just in case or that would keep watch but yeah I'm putting this out here I did actually list them on Facebook marketplace but I thought most of the people that were commenting were asking me for like can I put them outside in my rockery and all this sort of stuff and I thought what am I doing I've got a YouTube channel of people who are passionate and dedicated to these types of plants, like I should really allow someone like that to take care of them because it would feel a lot better for me because a lot of these plants hold, you know, very positive memories of um, of all the time that I've spent showing you them on um, YouTube but also all the times I've been able to have them growing outside in the sunshine at my parents' house and really getting a lot of enjoyment out of it, especially whilst I've been going through some quite difficult things health wise so here we are so I suppose I should give you a look at them all um, they're not particularly stressed or super healthy looking because they've been a little bit neglected um, we're just sort of sitting in the corner of my kitchen but this is a Chrysula Hummel Sunset very densely packed quite healthy some edema in places um, but it has a nice trunk on it I'm fairly sure I grew this one from a leaf but I could be wrong and then there's lots of little baby ones at the bottom so there's that one 
This is a Chrysula Redhorn, which I think Cassia sent me, uh, who's um, uh, sort of a succulent friend of mine. It's obviously not got anywhere near the sort of stress colours that it can produce, but nevertheless it's a beautiful plant and it looks very healthy, and I can't see any issues with this one. Next up, of course, is a Buddhist temple. And as you were to see, a lot of the leaves have died off on the main stem. And that's just from me not watering it for really long periods of time. I've just not, with all the house plants and with my cat and all this sort of stuff, I just haven't, you know, I just haven't had the same sort of drive to be watering them. But it still looks quite healthy. Um, I think the top died back because of uh, thrips, but as you can see, it's starting to bounce back really well. And lots, of, lots of new growth on that. Um, that part could even be chopped off and then just allow all these new stems to come up. This is a Gymnocleisium mehavanici. Um, if you're wondering what all the sort of dust all over it is, uh, that's the carrier material that was used for the mites, the predatory mites. You sort of sprinkle them over and they just sort of go to town munching on anything that's uh, living. This is a really beautiful. Echeveria agavoides. Not sure what variety, but yep. Next up is a an Echeveria prolifica, just a regular variety. I think I had a irrigated one at some point, but I think I just I think I left it outside of my garden one even. It just it died in winter, which is very sad. Next up, I absolutely love this one. Uh, this is um, an aloe alculeata, I think. But it just has fantastic stress colours on it. It's barely grown since I've had it because I've just kept it in such harsh conditions, i.e. like really rocky soil. Um, yeah, that's a beauty. Incredibly deadly, but lovely. Um, next is Graptoveri titubans, uh, Verigata. Um, Chrysula something. Forgotten the name of that one. This is some sort of Pachyphytum or Pachyveria, I can't remember which. As you can tell, I've not been looking at them much lately, so I've forgotten all the names. Here we've got um, Sedum Comic Tom, which is really, really nice. And in fact, what I might do with this one is take cuttings of that one, and then I can perhaps send it to a couple of people rather than just one. Or, uh, well, it's getting a little bit etiolated, so it would look much better being restarted anyway. Next up is another Buddhist temple which has either had Odima shoes or thrips, I'm not sure at all. Uh, you can look at the top and it's all dried out. It could also have been that it's too close to the light at the top, but I'm not I don't think it is that. But what someone could do is chop the top of the stem off and just allow all these new pups to come up and take over the place of that top part. Um, or even just chop here and allow this to come through as well. Then we've got Aeonium Kiwi, Mammillaria elongata, Chrysilla deceptor, which has got some new growth coming on it. Um, and is quite a well-established plant. It must be quite old now. Um, and then we've got Bear Paws. And then this one I've forgotten the name of. I think it's a sedum of some type. But yeah, so I'm not fully decided how I'm going to go about it yet. I think what I'll probably do is um, decide how to split it up and then create a photo album. But I'm just going to put this video up for now and just see if there's any interest, obviously bearing in mind the possible issues that I have mentioned. Um, so if you are interested and you live somewhere where I can post to, which is probably the UK or somewhere within Europe, please do leave a um, a comment down below and just let me know. I would possibly in be interested and then I can take it from there and just gauge what the interest is. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're all doing well and take care. And then just a quick 10 second pan of the Hawthias and the Gasterias that live on my east facing window. So.